everyone. I met Jillian's my good friend Elizabeth Olson, who is a longtime gaming industry veteran. And we we're talking about a very controversial series of events at this week's Game Developers Conference that impact women on what ha happens to be the week of which there was International Women's Day, right? Correct. On Wednesday. But it's the Yeti party and the women that were there and also this con this rather controversial talk. There was apparently a meeting that was a, a backlash to the call for more women in gaming, which was insulting. But you've been in the industry a long time. Very long time when there were very few women. How have you been treated? So but you have an interesting interesting perspective. I, I think do. it's very balanced. You know, certainly I am a big proponent of women in gaming. In gaming. Um, although for me, I think some of the women I respect most in the gaming industry has nothing to do with whether they're men or women. It's because they're really good at what they do. Um, I was really pleased to see a lot more women here. Uh, but there was a group of and it happened to have occurred on, ironically enough, National Women's Day. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Because they belong to a lot of the women in, in gaming groups, you know, the special interest groups for women in gaming. And there was a quite big uproar about group babes and um, at the Yetis in party, they had women that were essentially topless and painted. And a which here's a photograph, folks. See that? Which there are some photographs. Um, <laughs> But by the same token, and they talked about how this was disrespectful, and while I understand their position on, well, yeah, but if we always accept it, nothing will change, I'm here to tell you a lot has changed in the time I've been in the industry. Because when I was in, the only way you could go to a press event pretty much was in a strip club. So a lot has changed. Really? Really. And I've hired booth babes. I'm not offended by them if they're in the right context. Um, I think we can use a lot of tactics with Yetis in who, you know, the co-founder is a woman and a very well-respected woman, you know, a woman I respect. Whose name is? Sana. And um, so, you know, and Jay Path respects women. He's the, the male co-founder. Uh, they were out to put a party that got a lot of buzz. If I was doing a party around another form of entertainment or a certain lifestyle product or something like that, I wouldn't be above having, you know, if it was appropriate, scantily clad women or women acrobats or painted women. Um, it's a practice that's been done in Hollywood and by consumer good companies for years. Yes, there's some of that in the game industry, and one can argue, well, we shouldn't have to accept it. I didn't feel disrespected by it. In fact, sometimes I think that we can be oversensitive a little bit, and I think that then that leads to sometimes guys not wanting to work with us or being having to worry too much about what's said, and that concerns me sometimes too. Oh, a question that we talked about off camera, but actually I have to clarify this in my mind. How much of it also is women? Getting paid good money to be who coined the term booth babes anyway? You know, it's like I mean, I don't know. Booth babes existed where did that long. Come from? It, it existed long before the game industry. Hold on a second. If, <laughs> if you're watching this and you know the answer, put it in the YouTube comments section right there. Right? I want acquiring Ryan's want to know. So well, it's I mean, like the you know. auto industry, the you know drug industries have been using them for years. So it's not like it's new or exclusive to the game industry. Yes, there have been some things that have certainly crossed a line over the years in the industry, for certain. Um, and yes, we have a percentage of the industry that may not have the best social skills and boundaries, um, and that it gets out of hand. But by the th I think by the same context, I would rather us be more concerned. For example, a few weeks ago, there was a women writer in the industry, and she had done uh, written some... some dialogue and contents and plot into a very famous game that explored sexuality, homosexuality, things like that. And people were rabid on the, the uh, forums and things about bashing her, saying she was ugly, she was overweight, she should die. I mean, this is much more of a concern to me than if we've got hand-painted topless women at a party. And I think picking one's battles, because 
to me, I think that's the only way we're ever going to be respected for our talent, really talent and fully integrated. And while I, I would say that there have been a lot of changes from when I started. I used to have to worry about sexual harassment all the time and that being acceptable. And that's not the case. Uh, certainly not to the degree. Do you... Or did you see at this GDC more women there ever before? Or? I think so. I also saw a lot more suits, so I think people are starting to take it a bit more seriously. Um, well, you said that. Personally. Elaborate that. More suits. Like. I know a lot of lawyers, ah. a lot of people from outside the game industry that are starting to see the profits and potential. Uh, I sometimes miss the old days a little bit because it was a little bit more intimate. What were the old days like? Describe it. I started. You had the harassment too, right? Though. Well, true, true. And you know, when I started going to GDC, I was one of a handful of women, certainly one of the only marketing and PR women that went to GDC. And this, I'm talking probably, you know, six, probably 16 to 18 years ago is when I started going you know. to GDC. Yeah. And um, so there weren't a lot of women. And I would get cornered by guys at the bar that were just stunned to see a woman there. And my guy friends would Boy. take bets to see. She, does, she doesn't look like it, does she? <laughs> I had to get that. And my guy friends would take bets to see how long it would take me to extricate myself from the situation. Really? Yeah. Even they would specifically try to annoy you to see if you would. They they were. I would watch them taking bets. Wow. <laughs> That's harsh. But no, you know. So I think we've come along. You've got way more women on the panels and teaching workshops. You've got a woman running the show. Mm -hmm. you know, Megan's Great doing, point. Great point. Megan's doing an awesome job. You've got people like Robin Hunicky and stuff like that who are always great speakers here. Um, and really forces behind the independent game festival stuff, which again to me is one of my favorite parts of the show. So, and that wasn't the case back then. So I think we have come a long way. We probably have a little further to go, but I also think it when we blow it out of proportion over something insignificant, like pronouns. Yeah, like pronouns and talks and stuff. So I, you know, I say more power to the women and more power to the game industry. Do you think? What do you think about the women bloggers that some of them seem to? Well, I said this to one blogger. I actually wanted to interview today, mm -hmm. um, and I like I. I Enjoy your work, by the way. But I asked her on Twitter, I said, do you hate guys? Because she was looking at everything that was bad. Everything was like bad, 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 bad. What, what do you say to them? Or am I wrong? Am I, you know? No, I mean, I too feel like there's become an oversensitivity. I can't speak to her work specifically or anything. And I certainly can't speak for any of the women. They may truly be offended. Um, and maybe because they haven't been around to see as much growth. Can it always get better? Sure. I mean, but then again, I think there's a, a, lots of other areas where there's holes in our industry, too. And so, um, you know, to your point, people of color, right. my point... Um, Although, this was the first, and I have to say this, well, this is the first GDC where everywhere I looked, there was someone black. Yeah. And, well, and you know, there I didn't, you know, it wasn't like I had to, I didn't have to, I didn't have to try to see. You know what I'm saying? That well, was, and there's some you know, amazing black people in the industry that have yeah. been, you know, the gentleman who runs the um, IDG, uh, IDGA, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so, we, again, a friend and somebody I respect. So I think that there's, I think unfortunately, when it turns into vitriol, right. and there is some oversensitivity, probably, and it, it may be earned, but... I think then people are like, well, I don't want to work with, or they right. assume that we're going to be defensive about everything. Not the case at all. Not the case at all. I think things in context. You know, the reality is we are still a, a male-dominated industry. It's lovely to see that changing. See more and more women every year. Women I respect and admire. So, um, but there have been, there've been a lot of them there for years, and they're not the ones that are... Oh, that are writing blogs. And part of what you do kind of spills over to consumer electronics. Of course, of course, which again... Would you say that's the same improvement? Because I went to a Women in CES <laughs> event, and I didn't get a chance to talk to the women I wanted to talk to, uh, for reasons I won't go into on camera, but I got the sense that the situation was improving, but it still had a long way to go. I think it always has a long way to go. I think, and again, not just our industry. I think in automotive, I think in drugs, I think in consumer electronics. Some of it comes from the cultures 
where a lot of consumer electronics come from. I mean, look at some cultures other than ours. Right, right. Um, and I, again, I'm not saying just roll over and accept everything, but I say battles and sometimes lighten up a little. Um, I think at a, there are, I can think of a lot of parties where I would have had attractive women in various states of dress and wouldn't consider it disrespectful. The wise, balanced view from Elizabeth Olsen. I don't know if it's wise or not, but... <laughs> It is to me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>